Coach, as we sit here in Statesboro, Georgia, you're a little less than 24 hours out from catching a flight and going to watch a team you're very familiar with play in the Final Four. How many days are you packing for? Oh, well, I'm staying till Tuesday regardless. Obviously, I'm, I'm hoping I get to watch the Tide play twice, and uh, obviously I'll be cheering them on. You know, we love Alabama, especially obviously love Nate. He's a longtime friend, so I'll hopefully be cheering them on to two wins. So Coach Oates actually gave you your start in the college basketball world at the high school level at Romulus High School. What has your relationship evolved into now that you're in your own head coaching position at Georgia Southern? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're so both so busy. We probably talk a little bit less. Um, but, man, like, he was obviously my first boss. I mean, you already alluded to it, but... Uh, I was a little bit slow in school, so I had a little extra time to, to do it after I got done playing um, and went and helped him out for a year. And, I mean, from then on, you know, obviously it was an invaluable experience working for him. I mean, he's he's one of the best high school, you know, at the high school level. I used to, I was like, man, that's, I would go around in college, even when I was in the NBA, watch different colleges practice. I was like, man, like, Nate ran an unbelievable practice for any coach at any level, and that was when he was still a high school coach. So seeing once he got his opportunity, seeing what he's done has not been surprising at all. He's always been a terrific coach. Um, you know, after the year I worked for him, I mean, we used to talk nonstop. I mean, I would be in different places, whether it was, you know, my first year out at Utah or, you know, with the, you know, Pacers, Bulls, Iowa State. Uh, we were talking all the time, a few times a week. So uh, we talk a little bit less now because I think we're yeah. both busy. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I got my wife. If I'm on the phone too much, my wife obviously hit me. But uh, uh, we've we've caught up quite a bit this year, and, and he's given me a lot of, really a lot of encouragement. Obviously, it was a tough year at times for me. Um, but a lot of encouragement, a lot of listening. Obviously, he talks about you know his situation there and their team since I do know them well. Right. So. He's a really, really great friend. He's been a great friend to me, and I'll, I'll definitely be pulling hard for him. So when you were in Tuscaloosa, you were a part of that first big run they did in the NCAA tournament. And I put it as the expectation was born for Alabama to not only compete in the NCAA tournament, but go deep. So what do you think, what were the foundational pieces being built while you were there that makes you look back now and say, okay, yeah, this makes sense? Yeah, I mean, it starts with Coach. It starts with Coach Oates. Um, he is, you know, his first core value is obviously max effort. So he's, uh, I mean, he is high energy. He wants, he brings great effort every day. He wants everyone to do the same. So, you know, the max effort, um, always trying to get better. Obviously, that's his second core value, continuous growth. Um, you know, and then challenging everybody to, showing what goes into winning and losing the blue collar plays emphasizing the blue collar plays and then getting everyone to understand that that's their job so he uh it's really just him and his spirit it kind of really just bleeds over into everyone in the program so um that's to me that's what it all all really boils down to obviously um he has great players and we've you know when I was with him too we we're fortunate man to just coach some unbelievable players but you know it's getting getting everyone to buy into mm -hmm. the things that he he feels are really important speaking on those great players Mark Sears yeah did you expect him to be the player he is today you know I don't know if anyone would would say they would have foreseen this um but Mark is man he, he's a great player I mean he's had uh, one of the best, you know, in a year of college basketball where there's been unbelievable mm -hmm. individual seasons, you can put his right up there with anyone's. Um, so, again, you know, as last year he kind of came in, and obviously we had, you know, Brandon Miller, we had Javon Quinterly, um, who's similar to Mark in some ways as far as just position and size. Uh, so he had a great year last year. Obviously he's took it to a whole nother level. Um, as the opportunity has kind of emerged where, you know, you lose Brandon and you lose JQ and now the ball's in his hands and he's full-time point guard and he's took it to another level. But, um, you know, I obviously ran the defense and uh, when I'd have to, you know, be coaching the defense, guarding him in practice, uh, I knew that, man, if he gets to his left hand, like, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Again, I think we're all 
uh, we're all excited for him to see what he's took mm-hmm. it to. Uh, I don't know if anyone could have said like best point guard in the country, which he probably is. Um, but you're not surprised his games yeah. really took off. There are some flashes there that you guys got to see. I want to talk about that defense. You were an integral role in that during your time in Tuscaloosa. And this past season, that was a point of emphasis, but it wasn't necessarily a positive thing. In these last two games against Clemson and UNC, it's come to life. Quick scouting report for you on UConn. What needs to happen to shut down that big man in the middle and Donovan Klingon? Well, I haven't. I've been portaling, so <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I haven't studied UConn. I probably wouldn't be sleeping much if I was. Uh, I called called Nate this morning. He didn't answer. I know he's busy. I was just gonna give him some crap, but um, you know we played UConn last year and uh, and they handled us. It was early in the years at PK eighty five. Um, and we thought they were really good when we played them. Now they kind of hit a wall in mm-hmm. January, uh, but then obviously won a national championship, and when they won it, you you weren't surprised. I mean, I thought we would have a chance to, to win one as well last year and maybe meet up with them again, but they were a na- it was easy to see a national championship caliber team when we saw them in, in November, I believe. Um, and then obviously this year they looked terrific. Um, you know, Danny, Coach Hurley, him and Nate have a long time relationship. They go way back. A lot of the things I said about Nate, I'm sure people would say the similar thing about Danny. So it's going to be a terrific game. Obviously, um, you know, with, with Alabama, um, their front court's really going to get tested. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we obviously just lost so many pieces in their front court last year. Charles Bediaco was probably the best defensive player in the country. Noah Clowney, uh, unbelievable defensive player for a young player. And then even Brandon being your three, who's six nine and moves like <laughs> just definitely an all-around great player. So, you know, they don't have that. Um, but I, I think what you've seen from Coach in the tournament and what, she's, what they've done is such a good job of is just – you know, again, like North Carolina, just identifying what they're willing to live with mm-hmm. and what they're not, and then staying true to their plan. And then they put so much pressure on you offensively. Um, you know, that's the thing. I don't think you're going to go in and beat UConn in a meat grinder game. Like, right. they're just they're too good. So the fact that Alabama can score the ball so potently, I think – bodes well for again like obviously UConn's been terrific it'd be hard to bet against them in any setting but I think Alabama's going to have a really good chance because they can score the ball. Let's transition to your time now at Georgia Southern. In your daily routine whether it's interacting with players, interacting with coaches and even personally what have you taken from what you learned with Nate Oates and now here in Statesboro? Yeah I mean you again it's man it's almost hard to just answer in one question because um you take uh, take so much um, from him. Um, my wife actually made a good point. Um, you know, I've really worked for two. You know, I've worked with a lot of good coaches um, in my life. I've been fortunate that way. But you know, for the lion's share of my career, I worked with Fred uh, Fred Hoiberg at Nebraska, uh, and then Nate at Alabama, and then Ron Millis before that. Um, and you know, my wife kind of made made a point this year she said you know I feel like you're kind of healthy blend of the two um you know because Fred's very cerebral um whereas Nate's very fiery passionate uh you know when I was when I was on his on his bench and the other team scored a lot of times he would shoot his head back and say what happened you know so um he's awesome uh but honestly it'd be too too much to name Um, all the things I took from from different people I've I've had the privilege of working for, but um, we're definitely again. I mean, we're trying to um, you know trying to build something here, and again, it's not far away. That I'm, I'm not thinking of different experiences I've had. Mm-hmm. For you, going from Alabama to Georgia Southern, we've got SEC to mid major in a highly competitive Sun Belt conference. Mm-hmm. The recruiting and NIL portion for you is much different than Coach Oates right now because yep. you're having to deal with Tyra Moore drops 30 points and has an off day. Why would someone else not come pick him up? Yeah. What has that been like as you learn kind of how to navigate roster management and transfer portal? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, obviously, college sports, you know, our sports specifically, college basketball, it's definitely in a transition period mm-hmm. and you don't necessarily even know. Um, where it's ultimately going to end up you're just kind of trying to figure this out as you go I think as we all are Um, for us you know we're fortunate at Georgia Southern 
Um, you know, our athletic director, Jared Banco, he's very proactive. Um, I think he's been ahead of things. Uh, you know, we have a collective, obviously Eagle Nation collective. Um, you know, Leonard Bevel works tirelessly. Uh, you know, he, he takes pride in wanting to have, you know, again, the best collective in the Sun Belt. Um, you know, KBT, you know, under him. So, um, you know, again, I feel like we're ahead of things mm -hmm. and we're well equipped to adjust uh, as we're all kind of adjusting to the new landscape. Um, but I think for us, I've really tried to emphasize, uh, you know, with, with our guys here is we better have real relationships with them. So, um, again, that's not something you can just turn on when the portal's getting right. close. It's, it's every day. Like, they, they know me. They know our staff. They know the job we do. Um, so, you know, you, you better spend time developing some real relationships. And, obviously, they need to feel like they're, they're getting better. Um, creating value for themselves uh, so I think those two things are huge and then the relationships with their teammates um, you know and I think that's uh, something I, I see with our guys right now you know relationships with with the coaches are they're they're good and they need to have them um, but it's really the bond between players yeah. I think that um, can give you some some consistency in this day and age so um, again, we know what the reality is. Like we're we're gonna lose some guys, as everyone is in the in the portal era. Um, but we feel like if we're building great relationships with our guys, um, we're again we're fortunate to be at Georgia Southern, where Jared has has really had a, a vision and gotten ahead of things, and we have the support of obviously so many people at Georgia Southern that are you know helping us be competitive in this landscape. Um, but real relationships, getting them better, and then, you know, relationships with each other as yeah. well. I'll wrap with this, Coach. There's a lot of excitement down here. we got a new arena in the plans. I passed it on the way in. The structure's coming up. We might need to show that to Greg Byrne, get some inspo for Coleman. But what makes you excited to be the head coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've, I've said, you obviously doing a lot of mm -hmm. recruiting right now, a lot of Zooms, and... Um, and even just wrapping after the year, um, some tough times for sure. Obviously, we got off to a really miserable start, just being honest. Um, but never, you know, was disappointed, but never discouraged. Um, everything, all the reasons I took the job were all the reasons I'm so excited for, for our future. I mean, you've already mentioned some of them. Um, but it's just, it's great people. Like, I get a chance to come into work every day uh, and work with great people that really care about Georgia Southern and, and want it to be successful. So um, for me, it's it's just exciting. Um, I'm more of a year two guy anyways. Our, <laughs> my first year at Alabama didn't, didn't go all that well either, but we fixed it in year two. So we're, uh, we're expecting to, to have a really, really good year. And we're fortunate we got some, you know, some good players that we feel like we laid a little bit of a foundation late in the year, and now we're just looking to add to it. Thank you, Coach, for your time and giving me an excuse to come down to Statesboro. Yes, for sure.